Welcome to my tutorial series on modules. Today I will cover random module. The random module provides two classes, random and system random, and a variety of functions for generating pseudo random numbers. So what is the difference between random numbers and pseudo random numbers? Pseudo random numbers are generated by computers using an algorithm and they are many and a seed which is also known as the starting point, which is either chosen by user or sometimes it is the system clock. Pseudo random numbers are not strictly random because if you start with the same seed and same algorithm, you will get the same numbers again and again. Python 3 uses Mersenne's twister as its core random number generator, which generates pseudo random numbers with nearly uniform distribution. So making them suited for a wide range of applications such as simulation and modeling. But if you know the seed value, you can reproduce the sequence. This makes a Mersenne's twister not suitable for cryptography. Now let's look at the methods provided by random class. All these functions on the right hand side are actually methods of one of the hidden global instance of class random. However, you can create your own instances of random class by calling random class constructor. The advantage of having own instance of random class is that instance doesn't share the state and it is useful if you require random numbers in multiple threads. I will cover threads in one of my next tutorials. So in this tutorial I will not create any instance of class random because as I mentioned before all these functions are bound methods of a one hidden global instance of class random. Whereas the system random class provided by random module generate pseudo random numbers which can be used for cryptographic purposes. On Linux systems, the system random class calls the urandom system function, which obtains random numbers through special device urandom. And on Windows, system random class calls crypt gen random function to generate random numbers. I will not go into details how the operating system kernel generates the pseudo random numbers which can be used for cryptographic purposes, because it is not a part of random module. So in a nutshell, the system random class is very similar to the random class and it supports nearly all functions. But the random number generated by system random class are not easy to reproduce and they can be used for cryptographic purposes. Now let's look at the functions. The random module functions are divided into different categories and they are functions for integers, functions for sequences, bookkeeping functions, and statistical distribution based functions. Statistical distribution based functions generate random numbers from different distributions, such as uniform or normal distribution. I will not cover all these functions because they require extra knowledge of different distributions, and even complex examples are required to understand these functions. Now let's start with the most important function that is random. Almost all random module functions depend upon this function. The random function returns a random float value n from a uniform distribution such that n is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 1. In this example I call random function in a for loop. If you look at the output you will see the output is always between 0 and 1. Whereas the uniform function takes two arguments a and b and returns a random floating point n from a uniform distribution such that n is greater than or equal to a but less than b. Now let's look at the functions for integers. The random function takes two integers as arguments and return a random integer n that falls between these two numbers. So using randint function you can simulate a die as shown in this example. If you are already familiar with standard function range, then it is very easy to understand the rand range function. The rand range function returns a randomly selected element from the range. Argument start is the starting point of the range and it will be included in the range. Whereas stop is the terminating point of the range and it will be excluded from the range. The optional argument step is the difference between two consecutive values. You can set it to any integer value. And if it's not given, the difference between two consecutive values is always 1. 
If only one argument stop is given, then it is interpreted as total numbers in the range, starting from zero. In this example, rent range function returns an even random number between zero and 100. Whereas in next example, rent range function returns a random number between 0 and 100. In next example, rent range function takes only one argument step and returns a random integer between 0 and 9. Now let's look at the functions for sequences. The choice function returns a random element from the sequence. If sequence is empty, then it raises index error exception. The shuffle function shuffles a sequence. It takes two arguments, a sequence and a function object, whereas the second argument is optional. By default, it is the random function with uniform distribution. In my example, the shuffle function takes the list A as argument. Now when I print the list A, you can see the elements of list A are in random order. The sample function takes population, which can be a sequence or a set, and returns a sequence of length k from the population. So why we need such function? Suppose I have a list of 10 people, and I want to choose 3 people out of them. To choose 3 people from the list, I can use a sample function. If you look at the output, the list contains only unique items. But if the population contains duplicates, each of the occurrence has equal probability of being present in the selected list, as shown in the example. Now let's look at the bookkeeping functions, which control the state of underlying random number generator. The getState function returns an object, which represents the current internal states of the random number generator. This object can later be passed to the setState function to restore the internal state of random number generator. In this example, I call getState function, which returns an object which represents the internal state of the generator. Then I call the random functions and they return pseudo-random numbers. Later I call the setState function to set the state of random number generator to the previous state. If you look at the output, you can see the deterministic behavior of random number generator. The seed function initializes the random number generator and it takes two optional arguments, a and the version. If a is an integer, then the integer value is used directly as seed value. If no value is passed to A, then the actual system time is used as seed value. If the version is set to integer value 2, which is by default, and if argument A is not an integer, then the seed function converts string, bytes, or byte array object to an integer object, and all of its bits are used. The getRent bits is a very simple function, and it returns an integer with k random bits, as shown in the example. These statistical distribution based functions generate random numbers based on different distributions. As I have mentioned earlier, I will not cover all these functions because they require extra knowledge over different distributions and even more complex examples for understanding these functions. But let's look at the normal distribution function. The normal distribution is the most important and most widely used distribution in statistics. The normal distribution approximates many natural phenomena so well, like rates, heights, weights, etc. The normal distribution can differ in their means and in their standard deviation. The figure shows four different normal distributions with different means and standard deviations. The normal variate function takes two arguments, mean mu and standard deviation sigma and it returns a random number based on normal distribution, as shown in this example. I hope now you have basic understanding of random module. Thank you for watching this tutorial and please subscribe my channel for future tutorials.